Hey everyone, it's Bailey from Making Up the Midwest, and in this video I'm going to share with you a review and before and afters and a full day's worth of wear using Makeup Forever's new foundation. It is their Pro Finish Foundation. So in my mind, Makeup Forever has been really renowned for their foundations, whether it's their Matte Velvet Plus or their HD foundation that just made a huge splash, at least here on YouTube, and I'd say in the blogger community as well. They just are really well known for gr having great coverage and well-lasting foundations. So I was really excited to have the opportunity to try this and especially tell you about it because it just released I want to say within the month within a month of the time I'm filming this so it's brand new and I get to tell you about it. So obviously the delivery method and packaging of this particular foundation is very different than the two formulas I just mentioned matte velvet and HD. Both of those are liquid and this is a powder. Now the unique thing about this formula is that it was meant to be user it was meant to be have you have the ability to use it as both a powder or a cream. You can use it wet or dry to achieve two different finishes. Now I have an information this was sent to me and so I have an information sheet right here that way I can get all the facts right and it says that applied wet it's supposed to buy, uh, provide a sheer satin finish and applied dry it's supposed to provide a more full matte finish. More importantly it's supposed to provide buildable coverage and uh, longevity as I would kind of expect from makeup or forever because their foundations are just typically known for being good and long lasting. So this says it can contains silica and sericite powders, I think that's how you have, uh, for light reflecting and a soft focus effect, which I do feel it gives. Um, it also contains zimania oil and aloe vera powder, which you'll hear me talk about later in this video when I evaluate the wear. It's supposed to add some moisture and just give your skin a little bit of added nourishment throughout the day, especially since it's a powder foundation. And the other nice thing about this line is it does come in 25, yes, 25 different shades, anything ranging from the lightest porcelain shade you can see right here to what looks looks like a relatively dark or deeper shade here at the end. Mine is shade 120, which is right here. So you can see my skin versus all this. It, it's a pretty broad spectrum, which is great. So now I'm going to cut to me applying this powder this morning, and then I will carry on with the rest of this review at the end of the day, or actually now as I'm filming this, and I'll, you'll get a close up of me as I'm applying it, the finished effect as I'm applying it, and then you'll get to see my face at the end of the day to see how it wears. So let's get on with that. All right, so as you can kind of see, I first applied the Makeup Forever Pro Finish Dry on my right, your left side of my face, and it gave a really, a, kind of a relatively sheer coverage. I'm using this Japanese Kabuki brush, by the way, as recommended by Debbie Kim of Cute and Mundane, because she said that's how she applied it, and she got um, to get the results that she liked. So I used that dry all over the right side of my face, and then I used Scandinavia's No More Shine Makeup Finish Spray, uh, spritzed that on the Kabuki brush and used it to swirl it back in here and apply it wet to this side of my face. Now, they say in the, in the info sheet they gave me that it's supposed to apply more sheer and give you more of a satin finish. I found it was heavier when I applied it uh, wet, which is kind of what I expected, and was more sheer when I applied it dry. Again, kind of what I expected. So not what they said, but more along what I was kind of expecting from that. And because I like the heavier coverage, especially now during winter, I went ahead and applied it wet all over my face. So here are the final results without uh, concealer, rest of the makeup, anything else, just so you can see what it looks like just with the um, powder all over my face. So you can see it doesn't cover up blemishes. I mean, you only have that. It doesn't cover up under eye circles. It feels really soft and light but it doesn't provide the kind of coverage that I've expected from, say, my Makeup Forever HD or that my sister has. She has the Matte Velvet Plus. Well, so. I wouldn't say this foundation is full coverage, but in looking through the information, and this is just gl glancing at it, so I'll correct it in the information bar if it's incorrect, but I don't think it's supposed to be full coverage, but it does say flawless finish. I wouldn't say it's flawless. I really like the finish it gives to the skin, but I wouldn't say it's flawless. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of my face, and then I will check back with you later tonight to see how it wore throughout the day. So here we are now, about eight and a half hours has passed. I initially did my makeup at 8-ish a.m. and it is now, what time, 5.30, 5.40-ish. So solid day has gone by and this is what my face looks like. I'm gonna zoom in so you can kind of better see how the powder has worn throughout the day. So as you might be able to tell, it's more or less intact. Some blemishes have kind of come undone. The area under my eyes is less than perfection and 
Um, I, I'm not really noticing any splotchiness. What I do is more so in my blush bronzer area and less on the foundation side of things. I am a little dewy. I have some breakthrough shine coming in on my T-zone, my forehead, and um, down the center of my face because I have combination skin, so it's not unusual for that to happen to me. But I don't notice any significant makeup breakdown with this powder, which is great because I really wouldn't expect that from Makeup Forever. They just typically produce such good quality and long-lasting products. Something else I want to point out about the wear, because it was mentioned in the details that came with this foundation is that it didn't cake up. So often when I wear mineral powders or cake powdery foundations, I find that they will tend to cake up in my fine lines regardless of the season, regardless of what I've primed my face with. It's just the nature of a loose powder formula on my skin, especially with an oily T-zone. It can cake on me during the day, and I didn't find that happen with this. Instead, it tended to fall away, you know, on, on my under eye area and on my chin a little bit, but I didn't, not so much that it looks like huge chunks of my foundation are missing. So it didn't cake up, not a ton of it is, you know, has melted away throughout the day, and so it does deliver on that non, that cake-free claim, I guess, that it makes. Another note I want to make about the wear is that it did moisturize my skin. Well, not moisturize, it didn't dry out my skin like powder formulas often will, like Bare Minerals. I sometimes had that happen where during the winter if I would wear just the powder foundation, my skin needed a little extra nourishment throughout the day. And I found that this, uh, it didn't do that with this. This isn't my ideal consistency or texture for foundation. I am a liquid girl, pretty much always have been because I love the ease of application and generally how liquid applications tend to have a more fuller coverage um tinted moisturizers being the exception, but this is just not my favorite, and I also wanted to point out that despite saying you can apply it both wet and dry, there's a definite texture difference in this pad where you can see that it has this shiny kind of crust on top where I've used a wet brush and it has this dry, powdery, I mean kind of normal consistency. You can see there's some payoff on my middle finger, and then when I try and rub it with this finger, there's just hardly any. So it kind of, it forms the same crust on top that a product that isn't typically compatible with uh, liquid or water or mixing medium like that forms, and so it, it kind of it makes me wonder, A, am I using it wrong? Am I supposed to use something else to mix with this on my face? And B, is it really formulated for liquid use? I love how it wore with liquid. I loved the effect it gave using a, my, what is it, the Scandinavia Shine. I love that, and so I don't think that's the case. I do think it truly is meant to be used with liquid, but I, I'm not sure what liquid that is. If it's Max Fix Plus, because I have used that, and I did achieve the same kind of shiny texture on top. Like I said, I just used the Scandinavia and I got the shine on top, so I'm not sure what I'm supposed to use to mix with this to create the cream consistency, but I do know that that is my preferred method of application. I also do like this as a light dusting over itself, as a, as a cream kind of formula, but also over liquid foundations. I think it's a great, in the winter time, it's a great setting powder, despite being a relatively full, supposed to be a relatively full coverage in and of itself. Uh, I like it worn over other foundations. Overall, I'm going to have to say this is not my cup of tea in terms of winter foundations. It just doesn't provide enough or as much coverage as I typically like. That doesn't mean that come spring or summer I won't pick this right back up and just fall in love with it because I'm not looking for that or as much coverage as I am in the winter times. So I do feel that it really delivered on the finish it provides and the extra nutrients and moisturization it provides to your skin. I already said before that I have better luck with this as a powder foundation than I did with any other powder or uh, loose powder or pressed powder formula that I've experienced in terms of drying out my skin and caking up on my skin. This is definitely the winner as far as all of that goes. I would recommend this to anyone who wants less coverage in their foundation, whether it's from in spring and summer or in the winter, fall and winter months. If you want less coverage, this is a pretty good way to go. And it offers up some versatility in terms of being used both wet and dry, as well as a setting powder throughout the day or a mattifying powder throughout the day without caking up. That is something that is really unique to me about this kind of powder. Well, foundation, I guess. I never think of touching up with a foundation. It's always, I have my foundation and then I take my setting powder to go and this is kind of an all-in-one sort of thing. If you decide to purchase this or think this is something you're interested in, I would really evaluate what you want out of a foundation because if you are expecting something like Estee Lauder's Double Wear or even something a slightly lighter coverage than that, this is not it. I would go Matte Velvet Plus or their HD because this really falls somewhere in between in terms of... Um, 
finish is what I'm trying to say and it falls way below in terms of coverage in my opinion. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts on the Makeup Forever Pro Finish Foundation. I hope you enjoyed that and found all of that stuff helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye!